kidding. We're, we're recording. So good morning. good morning. Welcome to Unity of Chautauqua. And we're back in our sacred space. So, and not only that, we are celebrating 40 years this year at Chautauqua. So we've got a wonderful night. We've been bringing ministers here for the nine weeks by the gifts and generosity of all the people, both online and people in person, and ministries too send us gifts so that we may have, so that a minister can have a break for a week and experience Chautauqua. So I'm Reverend Barbara Williams, and it is so great. I coordinate this program, and I'd like to begin by us singing. song called We Come Together by Jack Fowler and it's a song that we've been using on Zoom on the off season so I think many of you will recognize it. You want me to go ahead Barbara? Go ahead. All right. Somewhere my I'll sing it through voice. once and then we'll sing it through again if you grab it. <laughs> something else about technology. As people are getting on there from Zoom, they've come in late and they're kicking me out of PowerPoint every time a person comes. So, yay. <laughs> so if our PowerPoint keeps disappearing with the words, what can I say? I'll figure that out by next week. Then you'll know we have one more person. We have one, yeah, we've had two so far coming in. So, yeah, that's right, that's right. And it's not working, so somebody's grabbed it. Good. So I'm gonna assume that I understand the order of service here. And our, let's begin with prayer. And I wanna tell you a story into prayer because something happened to me pretty exciting this morning. I wasn't sure how late I'd be here, I was walking my very big dog, that's part Rhodesian Ridgeback, and a chipmunk ran in front of us, and she got out of my hands, went down into this big garden, which had big high rocks about this high in it. She leaped over the rocks into the garden looking for the chipmunk. I was listening on my earphone to this song called God Is, I Am, right here, right now. So my temptation to chase her 
as she's leaping, because I can't get over these rocks, is, okay, not chasing her, letting her come to me. And she did. My husband had the same experience last year, and she ran for 25 minutes before he caught her. So I thought about that in relation to what we're experiencing in our country right now. Do any of you feel like you want to chase something? Like make something happen? Change something? There are a lot of people that are really scared about different, and on both sides of every issue. And I thought about it, it's just like my crazy dog chasing something. I don't want to be in that consciousness. So that's the invitation this morning as we pray, is to hold that we don't need to chase this, what's going on. What we need to do is know that God is, I am, right here, right now. And the more we bring that vibration, we will all begin to become co-creators with what's happening. So let's just take a moment now and just let those words sink in. Just hear those words, God is. Where does that, where do you feel that? You might put your hand on your heart. God is. And my connection to that God is energy of the universe, I am. Feel that? And I'm right here. Right now. And so we choose this consciousness within us, and we hold it as our gift to the world. And so it is, amen and amen. And now is the time for announcements, and since I can't forward them to you, I'm going to say as much as I remember. And actually, there's information right on the table, too, behind you. But unity, we call unity positive, practical Christianity. And one of the things that I felt over 40 years ago when I walked into unity was that my, my heart opened and my mind opened. And as those things gradually, because I was going through a very difficult time, and I sat where you're sitting, and I know many of you go home to Unity Church as you felt this too. I was at home and my life was transformed as, as I experienced Unity. So I invite you this week, if you're on campus, every morning here, there will be a meditation at from 8 to 8.30 with our, and I'm gonna introduce her in a minute, with Reverend Therese Lee, who is with us this week. And especially what's real, if you, let's say you live not locally, inside Chautauqua Gates, then at the Turner Center, which is north of here, it's a community center and also an athletic club. We have a beautiful room there. Reverend Therese will be giving a um, lecture and I'm gonna have to ask you what it is because I had it up on my slide. And- It's gonna be a talk. It's gonna be a talk. <laughs> and, it, plus, Therese surprises us all the time. Well, and you're going to meet this. I allow spirit to work through me. She, yes, yeah, she allows spirit. We'll be prepared, I promise. So that is at Wednesday, 6.30. If you are here, living inside the gate, you need to bring your pass because actually Turner, the Turner um, Community Center is outside of Chautauqua. But for those of you on the outside, it has great parking in the front, so. We hope we will see you there. And so now is our time to begin our song for our lesson. Okay, 
So when I was trying to pick a song for the theme, the topic here, I couldn't find one that matched to my liking. So uh, a couple days ago, I sat and wrote something. Um, and I took Teresa's words from her description of what she's going to talk about today. And then the uh, Supreme Court thing happened, and then I thought, I can't get behind this song now. <laughs> because I felt so challenged by it. Like it just, so I, I, tweaked the, I tweaked the lyrics a little bit and, and made it be more of a request for help, um, a kind of a statement and a request. So I'm going to sing it a couple times. Um, and then there's going to be an echo thing. So I'll, I'll sing the, a few words and nod to you and you just repeat it. And we'll go back and forth that way, okay? I really don't have a name for it yet. But if you have a suggestion after, let me know. I can change my mind, change how I want to see. Don't be consumed by the challenge. No matter how it seems, can I be willing to be bold, trusting in the wholeness of the truth of who I am, where I come from? I can change my mind, change what I want to see, don't be consumed by the challenge, no matter how it seems, can I be willing to be bold, trusting in the wholeness of the truth of who I am. So, yeah, a long, wow, a long time ago. 
and then prayer chaplain songs and all sorts of things. So she said, what are you talking about? And this is what I wrote. I said, whatever you want to sing is perfect. I know that about you. I do. So I have a playground voice. I'm going to try to figure out how not to scream at you all. Having eyes to see. Eric Butterworth is a, um, he's now an angel uh, minister, but he had the big church in downtown um, New York City. And he would say that we see things the way we are. Now, many other people have said that. Emerson you know, would say, change your mind, change your life, and things like that. Many, many people. So unity is nothing new, even though we're in the new thought genre of the World Parliament of Religions. It's just about understanding if we don't like what we see, change our specs, right? Or change your mind. What is it outside of us that's trying to teach us something? Everybody breathe. My scripture for today is from Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. With humans, it is impossible. With God, all things are possible. So the very word impossible says, I'm possible. I love words. I love words. So we're possibilitarians, <laughs> if you want to be, if you allow it to be. So God, we know, has provided many wonderful things to see here on the grounds. We decided to have this talk be this title because of all that is happening in the world. We've had COVID. We've had, I just had my 46th funeral at my church. I only had 23 to start with, so there we go. Um, and so what does that mean? And how can we get prepared to live life today? So I always say every week, buy the chocolate and eat it. <laughs> buy the flowers for yourself, don't wait. So our affirmation for today is one that I learned 33 years ago, Marshall McCartney's church in Chicago. I am alive, awake, alert, joyous, and enthusiastic about my life. So we'll take that in parts. I am alive, I am alive awake, 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 alert, alert joyous, joyous, and enthusiastic, and enthusiastic about, my about, life. about my life. Because no matter what's happening inside of us, or what's happening really more importantly outside of us, we get to decide what we're going to shift inside. So I went to bed last night. I had four fans on. I could not get cool enough. I don't know why. I wasn't sweating or anything. I was just like, well, it's happening. But this is, I know this about myself on Saturday night. Talk's done. Every, Janine's singing. Barbara has everything in order. But Teresa's the one in control. Anybody else have a control gift? <laughs> Be honest, right? So it's just what happens. And I sat there, you know, and I get myself all meditated and all that. But it's just like, this is what happens. I get so excited about Sunday. And I'm speaking to other places simultaneously, so um, we hope their Wi-Fi works and all those other things that I did. It's been said that things happen while we're making plans, right? So life happens around us as we're making plans. Can we see it rightly, beholding the beauty everywhere, regardless of what we might see? So I have trifocals, so I've got nine eyes on my face. But if I can close them for a moment, I can see rightly. I can see it as so versus as I am. It's a big difference in that. Are we willing? Unity is about affirmative prayer. Someone was asking me yesterday, I don't know what that is. Well, my version is that it's affirming it as so. So today was going to go excellent. Everything, everybody who was supposed to show up is going to show up. We'll be done in time to go here, Mike, at the 1045. So you, you pray, not like a bliss ninny, but affirming it to be so. And that way then the rain's going to hold off till later on, so everybody will be fine. And if it doesn't, then you accept what is. Byron Katie, who's a fabulous person as far as um, life stuff, will say, quit fighting with reality. Because that's what causes the suffering. And the suffering is understanding that we're believing our thoughts. So that's what the song, even though we didn't even talk about it, is about. Change your mind. If you don't like it, see what, what can be different about it. And my question every week is, are you willing? Are you willing? 
So there's a story about a couple named Alice and Gladys, Alex and Gladys McLeod. They are in Hot Springs, Arkansas. The year is 1928. And there is a great, they, so they own a bed and breakfast, like a, a you know, kind of, I guess what we call a bread and breakfast today. And a couple comes in, they make their stay, they, they're going to check out and they don't have the $10. And they say to the McLeods, well, we're gonna, we have this really good recipe and it's for barbecue sauce and it's worth more than $10. Well, the couple, the McLeods were like, okay, you know, kind of like barter trade. So they take the recipe, they have no idea if it's any good or not. So they send the couple on their way, they go home, they make the recipe and oh my goodness, I understand today the fire people are going to be having barbecue chicken available. So this kind of spurred on my remembering of this thought. So they go, so what happens is it's world famous. The uh, newscaster, uh, Willard Scott, remember him on the Today Show, went to Arkansas to taste this. And he said it was by far the best ever he's had. The road food show said best ever. So today, for $10, it's locked in a lockbox, guarded. They sell 7,000 pounds of mouth-watering hickory smoked beef, pork and ribs, 250 gallons of spicy beans, 250 gallons of coleslaw, and on and on. So the $10 recipe, because they had eyes to see, potential in the words that the person said, this is the best ever. Haven't you ever had someone say, this is the best ever, and then you taste it and you're like, yeah, not so much. <laughs> right? Well, they didn't, they didn't go there. They just went to, all right, we're going to do it. And here, they had a great, wonderful life. Are you willing to take the chance on what may be so serendipitous in an exchange, knowing and seeing it as so in your life this year? Look at this, we're back in our original space because we saw it as so last year, we were holding that together, right? So I believe God's will for us is to live a blessed life. Does it mean we don't cry? No, does it mean we're not gonna have hard times? No, does it mean we have stuff happen on the news or in life? Yes, it's okay. Can we see beyond it knowing what is the great source of life? The presence, the power, active in our universe, always and in always. I was sharing with um, Janine and Reverend Barbara before I came in. I had someone come to my facility back in, or our, so we meet at a synagogue on the island, and she said to me, I'm not coming back. I came last week, I loved it, I didn't like this week. And she had all this head going on, you know. And I said, oh, well tell me. She said, well you talked about Jesus last week, and this week you talked about God, and I don't like God. I don't believe in God. Um, it, I'm like, oh, okay. So what I was, I nudged one of my people to say, you know, go talk to her. Um, and what they said is, maybe you would use a different word for God. So what we're finding, not only in unity, but in the world, is people are affected by words. So the encouragement was, maybe every time Reverend Therese says God, you could say love, beauty, some other word. Well, we'll see if she comes back. Janine's used that as well, and people have come back here. So what we know is that, and what we're, we're my, um, I don't even know, dander is up this week, is what's being used in the Bible uh, as a weapon. Mm -hmm. So my first ministry out of ministerial school was with E.J. Niles, who took the Bible, reordered it chronologically, hopes to publish it, that was 2007. So can we use the Bible as a roadmap, as an instruction versus a weapon? And the, Bible, the ministry was called um, that. And then we changed it to Spiral Pathways. But it was something, I, I, I remember saying to her, what does this mean? And she said, we just want to stop the Bible being used as a weapon. This is the foyer of God's house this space right here. It's called Unity of Chautauqua. 
And what we know is that the kingdom of God is everywhere present, right? So wherever you're staying tonight, there lies the kingdom. I teach my grandchildren to open their shirt if they're questioning where God is and say, hello, God, to look to their heart space. So we're never alone, no matter where we are. What I loved about COVID is it had taught us, and many of the folks that are older than me who said they believe you had to be in a building to be with God, we didn't do that. We stayed at home, didn't we? For us, we were um, out, of, out of the building for 24 months. And we did church online as we had been doing. And so we can still feed each other if we have eyes to see it as so. If we have eyes to not be frustrated, oh, look at how cute that is. <laughs> you know, no matter what's happening up here, can we lead and listen to what Janine is singing to us, right? Couldn't we, wouldn't it be great if we all did that when we were having a hard time seeing stuff? And just, <laughs> and can you imagine in the middle of a meeting? Like, <laughs> we'd be like, Therese, what are you doing over there? I'm going to try that at the next board meeting. We'll see. So each week, we hope you come here and take away something that feeds your soul something that is applicable to life today based on what the Bible is about, based on what Jesus did as he lived his life. I like to say, and I'm probably most quoted now, so I'm finding out, that Christ is not Jesus' last name. It's his job description. That changes. It takes it off of something we can't attain to, oh, look at me, I better get my feet on the ground. I better be the one out being the hands and the voice and the face of God in the world. It takes a shift in perception. Careful how you hear that. S-H-I-F-T. <laughs> right? Albert Einstein calls it the holy shift. Are you willing? Are you willing? A miracle, which some people think have to be done upon onto us, actually is just us shifting our perception to see it differently, to have eyes to see. To have eyes to see. Charles Fillmore says miracles occur as we have our eyes open, we are ready, we call forth our faith, grounded in the strength of God, in the principle and the presence that is always and in always with us. I use that when I go, I'm going home in a couple weeks. Home is Chicago for me. And I'm fifth child of 11. <clears throat> I don't think I need to say anything more. And I'm the only non-Catholic. <laughs> I'm the first one they call to pray, but I'm the first one they question when we walk in the door as well. So I have to remember this. Oh, I'm gonna create miracles as I walk into my life. And we all look the same. Oh my God, we all look the same. And so it's hard to see like, wait, how does that voice be different than mine, right? Can we remember, and what I love about unity is the wrestling that we know Jesus did every day, wherever he was, between the divinity of himself, 100%, and 100% human. Because what happens is the ego starts talking in our mind, and then all of a sudden we think, ugh, everything's ugh, you know, and the shoulders are all, you know, and your face gets all droopy. And when we say, wait a minute, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a miracle happen here. I'm going to have a shift in, per, shift in perception, and then I'm going to have eyes to see. So when I do that, I meet with a lot of, I'm starting the interfaith community in Hilton Head. Well, first of all, they can't even believe it. I work for God because I'm a girl. And that's what they'll say, like, you're a girl. I'm like, well, thanks for noticing. <laughs> thanks for noticing. Can we get to the point, right? <laughs> South Carolina. Can we let our hearts be aglow? Can we be the example and then allow the shifts to happen in them even without even calling anybody out? I just show up. I do have a cross I wear. It's made out of seashells, so it fits kind of Hilton Head, right? I don't have a collar. I do have a stole. So it depends on who we're meeting with, who we're meeting with. And my new best friend is Sister Pam Smith, who's the head of ecumenical studies in the Diocese of Charleston. And she and I, I said, you and I could get into a lot of trouble. She said, I know, I'll have to leave my habit at home. She wears that little thing on her head, you know, the little, you know, veil. And so can we shift our eyes to see? And that's the agreement I made with this ecumenical group we're trying to get together so that we see we have more in common than we have in differences. We get to dream every day. I hope you are. And then the dreams, and you're thinking, oh, I, I, I can probably never achieve that. 
Well, leave that aside. I will achieve it. I'm not sure when it might happen. So we get to shift the words that shifts our consciousness, that allows then the manifestation of the outpicturing of whatever it is we choose. When the ECOC called and said, would you like to be a house hostess? I said yes, without asking any permission of my board or anything. And then I called Barbara and said, hey, I'm gonna be up there. Would you like me to speak? So I had, and if she said no, it would have been okay, right? I would have caused her great consternation this week. But, you know, so we don't always get our way, but all voices get to be heard. That's what I like about unity. All voices get to be heard. Having eyes to see the glorious, to have eyes to see that this is a spiritual adventure of which there are lows in the valley, and then there's the highs on the mountainside, right? The moment here is a gift, and that's what we get to figure out. Are we staying present to have the shift happen, to be awake, alert, joyous, and enthusiastic? Because we have a choice, don't we? Every, every moment of every day. I didn't learn that till I was 30 as I was finding unity and I thought, wait, I, I have a choice? Wait, I'm the boss of me? Wait, what? You know, and now I know God's the boss of me. So therein lies the peace. What I know about life and how easy it changes so quickly, yes? Pause, breathe, and be grateful. Decide if you want chocolate today or not, like I said earlier. And just take a moment, so do this with me, close your outer eyes as you're comfortable, and say, I am blessed right now, out loud together. I am blessed right now. We open our eyes, now look at everybody, and see why you're blessed. Turn around, look around the other way, right? And all those on the screens, whoever's online, thank you for being with us. So we get to prepare our mind. I say every day before your feet even hit the bed or even hit the floor out of bed, do you say, good morning, God, or good God, it's morning? Because it's your attitude. And the attitudes are contagious. The question is, is yours worth catching? Right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So we might have been blind to so many things just a minute ago before we came in. And maybe you're a musician and you think, oh, my God, I could never write a song. Well, guess what? Janine found that she could write a song yet again. She has a whole plethora of songs. And so do you give yourself enough credit to do that? Can you realize the joy that life is everywhere present, even in the silence? So Robin and I are sharing rooms, and Robin only knows me as vivacious and loud. And I am quiet on Saturday. Yes, so quiet. On Saturday, Saturday night, I got earplugs in this morning. She's Sunday morning. <laughs> Sunday morning. You know, I, that's just me because I live alone and I forget, oh, wait, I'm sharing a room with somebody. So I have to be me in it. And it doesn't change the truth of who I am. I just am different in that moment. Practice makes progress. Because when I was a kid, I thought, ooh, let's just get, if I just get that way, if I can just be that way, and when I, when I, when I, well, I'm going to keep practicing and progress is made because perfection is what? Probably not available, right? We're perfect, but maybe our actions aren't always perfect. Are you willing today to make everything be so exciting? Whatever that is, even if it rains later, are you willing? Are you willing to allow things to become what you want them to be because you see them as so? And again, it's always on God's time. Because when I think I'm in charge, man, I can hear the laughter going, going, going. Another favorite scripture of mine personally is Romans 12, 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind to discern the will of God. So the mantra I have is I will to will the will of God. That slows down this very busy mind. The way I speak is very fast, so it slows me down. I will to will the will of God. Now, we, and I'm bold. My grandma told me I was bold when I was like eight, and I love it, and I'm living into it, and on Mother's Day, I was celebrating her. Like, Graham, look at me, I'm bold, you know? <laughs> she's been gone for, since I was 16, but she's still around, obviously. So the truth is, right here, right now, life is happening. 
The present moment is a gift. That's why it's called a present, right? We get to shift this consciousness in our minds and see this community here, all the seats. That's what Dorothy Pearson used to say when she would walk. Dorothy Pearson knew Charles Fillmore, our co-founder. She would walk into an empty auditorium and see every seat filled. So she would be doing daily word and she said, and I can see um, Martha over there and I can see Ed Rabel over there. And so we see the seats being filled that you're gonna have to like push out the doors possibly, right? Maybe have two services, we don't know. God is, Barbara said earlier, we are, I am. When we remember that, then no matter what's on the news or what someone's talking about in your ear, we can get back to center and the truth of who we are. Everything can seem ordinary or we can remember, oh, wait a minute, I am, because God is. This is extraordinary, extraordinary. So we get to realize again that life is about a, um, a journey and not a destination. Not, I do a lot of end of life. I do grief counseling and things like that. And, and, and what we're going to talk about on Wednesday, I just remembered, is accepting change, acknowledging loss, allowing feelings. Because what has shifted for us in these last years since COVID hit us and everything else that's happening in the world is we feel like, oh, I, I don't feel, I'm not sure what I'm feeling, but no one's dying. It's still grief, the normal and natural reaction to a loss or a change in a behavior. Death is part of that, but mostly it's just shifting in our life, and it's all right. We don't, and there's no comparison, there's none of those things. So we're just going to talk about how do you get back to feeling comfortable in the discomfort. And I don't have your answers, believe me. So can you take a moment every day, get alive? 365 days of being a possibilitarian. I love that word. And an artist named Kelly Ray Roberts, may, I think, coined that name. And I thought, oh my gosh. And my friend Jennifer, who was in ministerial school, that she said, we're going to be possibilitarians. I said, okay. Well, here we are. Life is a circle. We know that song, right? Life is a circle. And so we get to continuously complete it with whatever that means by remembering who we are and whose we are. So a lot of times I'll get prayer requests. Can you pray for my cancer? No. I will pray for your wholeness and acknowledge your divinity. Cancer is just a byproduct. So, so sometimes I don't get a second request from those people. It's all right. But I'll say, how, will you pray this with me? Will you hold your wholeness with me? Will you hold your divinity with me? And again, quit naming all the things that afflict us and get back to the truth of who we are. Bless the hands that touch you, you know, so as hospital things happen and things like that. Bless the fact, that's how Mo Myrtle was able to cure her um, sober toe, because we weren't there, the um, tuberculosis when she heard you are a perfect child of God and therefore you do not inherit disease. So she had the eyes to see her perfection and prayed and gave thanks for her body. So she said, I don't care that my grandma, my mother, my aunt, my sister all died of tuberculosis. I'm not gonna be that girl. So we are of God. We get to remember that. Does again, not necessarily gonna be always that easy, but it is that simple to remember. Take a moment, breathe in. Know that as this spiritual community here called Unity of Chautauqua, we are, in fact, the ones who can make it so. We change our minds. We have a conviction of our faith, of the truth of who we are, standing in our audacity, that's my favorite word for this year, keeping it real, and knowing that the presence is present every day and affirming yet again, I am alive, awake, alert, joyous, and enthusiastic about my life. And now we're going to go into a time of meditation as you think about that. If you're comfortable, you can close your outer eyes, or not, because I'm not the boss of you. And we breathe into this moment as Janine sings us into meditation. In the 
we allow the very presence of God right here, right now, represented by those sitting in front of us and behind us to our left and to our right as the reminder, the physical reminder of the presence of God. We release and let go one more time as we go to a place of gratitude. Something that allows a smile to form on your face. Think on that. Could be your favorite visiting minister. What's going to happen later today? How joyful the song was. Unity of Chautauqua in person. Something that brings a smile to your face as we go into the silence and let gratitude fill us from the tip of our toes to the top of our head in the silence. We are blessed and we are a blessing. And we breathe into this knowing, grateful for this time together, this sacred and holy ground in this moment we call unity of Chautauqua. For your presence and your consciousness that makes today all that it is. And as we bring our attention back right here, right now, we pray this in the name and after the nature and under the authority of the living, loving present rep presence represented by each of you and by me. And so it is, and so we let it be. And so I like to think of like 
that parts of me, all of me, in some way is given out into the universe. Financial, a smile, all the different ways that I show up. And as Therese reminded us, that um, we can have different eyes to see and start showing up. So um, let's say our offertory blessing together as you hold that gift of love. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Thank you, God. And so we're going to sing as our board president Kelly says around our basket. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. That sounds so beautiful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. So I forgot to mention that I am trying to be innovative, so I put a QR code. So if you want to give later, you can just put your camera on that little code on our, our isn't that amazing, or also on our website. I did not mention those earlier because I didn't have a slide up to go. But COVID, as um, uh, Therese said, had very hard, difficult times, but it also had some blessings, and it made us online. Because before that, we were only in in-person for um, 10 Sundays and nine lectures between those Sundays, Wednesday night lectures. So now we have a website. We have a YouTube channel. We have a Facebook page. What else do we have? And a QR code. <laughs> and um, we don't have Twitter. No Twitter. Thank you. No Twitter. But, um, and during the year, one Sunday, the first Sunday of every month, except for September, uh, um, we have a service online uh, and also again on YouTube. So I hope you'll continue after the season's over to watch us once a month that first Sunday. Uh, so let's bless our offering. Would you bring your hands up and, and add that consciousness? And no, it's not. There are a lot of people that send in their checks as well. So let's just imagine they're, they're here too that all these checks. There are people that get on PayPal using, not that QR code, but on our website, which is unitychq.org. And it's on the little handout you have, but also it's made up of chq.org, which is Chautauqua Institution, and unity.org. So those are also websites I'll hope you'll visit. Mm. So let's just take and imagine, this basket is overflowing from all different places, including this room. And so we hold that these gifts become that energy of God that moves through this week for Therese, as for the other ministers, for the others that are coming later this, these months, and also for us, for our intention that generosity is who we are. And so we thank you, God, for this beautiful place, this sacred space, for each other, for the consciousness that we create in this moment that we call unity. Amen and amen. So now, I'm, I'm trying to think of the logistics of this. <laughs> because we haven't sang for a long time, we have done, some of you know, in our unity song book, The Wings of Song, there's a song that touches my heart, and we used it several mm -hmm. times online because it, it says weave us together 
and unity and talk about a song about what's happening in our country. So we're going to sing that. I don't think we're going to do the service, and some people want to keep a distance still. Um, but we're going to sing that together, we, and then the peace song, and then we'll say the prayer. And if you want to stand for any of that, that'd be great too. But I want you to visualize, would you like that? You're holding the world in your hands as we begin right now. What a blessing, that opportunity, as we begin with weave. Wherever we are, God. 